who should participate in the Lord's Supper and who should not. In churches these days, some are wide open. You come on, everybody, profession of faith or not, you come and eat and drink. There are others who have close communion. There's some criteria here. There are some standards, and you better meet those or you're not participating for your own sake because you could get weak, sick, or even die. On the other hand, you've got people who shut it off to anybody who is not a member with a practicing membership and statement of faith in a local church. Nobody. That would be closed communion. What sort of communion do you have at your church? Recently, Nine Marks Ministries asking the question, is the Lord's Supper for members only? The implications of this are very big. Do you have kids? Are they teenagers? Are they taking communion? Have they been baptized? Are they members of, what should be the ordo of communion and membership and baptism? Nine Marks Ministries seeking to answer that. And this, this might hit you a little bit radically because this is not a closed table position, but definitely a close position. Now here's the answer. The Lord's Supper is among other things, a sign of church membership. Huh? When you pull church membership and the ordinances apart, you turn membership into something that is unbiblical because the supper is a family meal for members of the family. That's what the Apostle Paul said, quote, because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one Bread, repetition is important. By partaking of the one bread, we demonstrate that we are one body. The supper in that sense is a church affirming and church revealing activity. Uh, in other words, if you have not laid it on the line, I'm a member of this local church, I believe what they believe, I have a statement of faith and a testimony that is solid and the elders have said, thumbs up to you then you shouldn't be taking communion according to Nine Marks Ministries. Now, Matt is a fellow who is in a local church, and Matt has a testimony, and Matt's been at the church for quite a while. He's a regular attender, but Matt doesn't like the idea of becoming a church member. What is the pastor to do with Matt from Nine Marks Ministries? I don't know how the church can give the sign of membership, which is the Lord's Supper, to Matt. Just like I wouldn't give a team jersey to someone who deliberately refrains from joining our team, even if I think he would be a great player. That kind of stung, didn't it? That maybe an, even an intramural sports team has standards that we in the church gulp don't. In other words, clubs, rotary, athletic, baking, sewing, whatever it happens to be, they have some standards where they say, hey, wait a second, before you participate with us and do this thing with us that says you're a part of us, you need to be a member. Should that not also be true in the church more from Nine Marks Ministries. There is something ironically coercive about the person who insists on coming and taking the Lord's Supper at their own discretion. It's as if such an individual says to the church, you will affirm me as part of the one body when I partake of the one bread. But no, you cannot ask me any questions or make any demands on me whatsoever. I will control this process of affirming that I am a part of Christ's body, not you. And I will use your assembly to do it. Do you remember how we stopped and focused on flawed elders and the importance of submitting sometimes maybe even to people that you don't even think are as mature as you? Why? Because it's biblical. When you reject their authority over you and then state, but I'm going to take the Lord's Supper. It's not the church's job to determine if I'm really saved. And actually, 
It is. Now, we all know that ultimately God is the only one who knows the heart, but he has given authority to the church to declare either this person is in or out. We do not make that declaration for ourselves. Now, of course, we say, I'm saved. Here's my testimony. I'm a believer. I'm just telling you I'm a believer. But it's the local church's job to say we agree or not. And so when we skirt that process and then make a beeline to the Lord's Supper, we are literally just blowing off authority. And that just isn't biblical. I'm more from Nine Marks Ministries. You have robbed the supper of its corporate meaning and turned it into an exercise in self-expression in which you unilaterally employ the supper to say something about yourself. I know. You've been burned at church. They, they hurt you. They abandon you. It was a legacy church. Your grandparents started that church, and now all of a sudden they're... But until you determine it's time to go and do that biblically, you need to still be submitting to the elders. And I get it. That's hard to do. But might I suggest that is the point? And that is one of the best ways that God actually grows us in humility and submitting not only to somebody we can see, but to somebody we can't see. Him. Uh, one last thought from Nine Marks Ministries. Whenever we serve the supper in our church, we specify the fact that it is for members of our church or for baptized members of another church that preaches the same gospel we preach. So in other words, it's not closed. It's not, nobody comes here but people that we say can come here. No, if you've got a testimony, I'm a member of another church, it's affiliated, we know the stream that it's in, you've spoken to the pastor, then you'd be welcome. Not everybody is welcome, not everybody is shut out, but only people who are church members.